we are here as part of the symposium on the next big thing in stroke, which outlines some of the major advances that are being made and the future of stroke uh, treatment and prevention in the future. Uh, my name is Randolph Nudo. I'm from University of Kansas, and I'm a basic scientist who tries to translate uh, basic neuroscience findings into new clinical applications. And uh, the, the topic of my discussion was the future of drugs and devices in the area of recovery and rehabilitation. And we've made great advances in understanding this long time window, much longer than the acute phase after stroke, for restorative processes that last weeks after stroke. And so now we have a number of potential targets for new drugs that can be introduced in clinical trials. And that is a great area for emphasis in, the fu in future clinical trials. I also discussed the area of neurotechnology and the development of microelectronic devices that uh, can have a great impact on uh, individuals that are severely impaired uh, after stroke, such as brain-computer interfaces uh, to use uh, control signals from the brain to drive external devices uh, such as robots. And uh, more sophisticated uh, devices that can be implanted into the brain in the future to repair damaged pathways. These are two areas that uh, have uh, many challenges uh, ahead of them, but uh, we'll, we will see an impact on the field of stroke treatment in the near future. And I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Stein. Thank you. My name is Dr. Joel Stein. I'm from the Department of Rehabilitation and Regenerative Medicine at Columbia University in New York City. Uh, my talk was addressing the role of robotics in stroke rehabilitation and recovery. Uh, working off the uh, research that Dr. Nudo and others have done, it's become clear that exercise and task practice are critical elements in the process of recovery after stroke. Uh, we need better techniques to deliver these exercise therapies and to achieve labor savings uh, so that we can deliver more therapy without necessarily hiring more people to do so. Uh, the use of technology, and in particular the use of robots, allows us, at least in principle, to deliver more therapy without hiring additional staff to do so, um, and thus ultimately to enhance the recovery that patients experience. Uh, we reviewed briefly some of the existing uh, research and robotic devices that have uh, already been put out there, and also looked to the future for new technologies that are on the horizon and that we believe can enhance uh, the delivery of exercise therapy to our stroke patients. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Launer. I'm Lenore Launer from the National Institute on Aging in the Intramural Research Program. I'm a neuroepidemiologist interested in brain aging. So my task was to really introduce the idea of cognitive impairment, vascular cognitive impairment, into the uh, conversation about stroke and stroke outcomes. Uh, vascular cognitive impairment is a very frequent problem in individuals who have um, severe, who have cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, but it's a difficult thing to sort of pin down uh, definition-wise. Nevertheless, there are many older people, there are patients, and there are, in fact, younger people now who are becoming, uh, who have, um, where there's an increasing incidence of diabetes and obesity, where the issue of, of vascular cognitive impairment may become an important part of uh, determining the quality of their life. So we went through um, a little bit about the prevalence statement of the problem, um, and some future directions that people are taking now, uh, including some basic science which looks at the interaction between the neuron and the vessels, um, some, uh, the need for new technologies to be able to image the vascular damage in the brain that is related to uh, cognitive function, um, the need for clinical trials, either de novo designed for, for um, cognitive outcomes or adding strong cognitive outcomes to ongoing trials, and um, finally, the use of um, genetic uh, risk factor scores that may be useful in identifying people who have vascular disease and cognitive impairment. Thanks.